some of my cases are as old as 10 years and older. Recently, Mike Kenny reconstructed the James Dean collision on old evidence because new technologies have become available. I drove up very romantic. I drove up with a friend of mine and said, Fuck, let's go somewhere else. This looks dodgy. <laughs> He doesn't need his name up in lights, he just wants to be heard Whether it's the beat of the mic, he feels so unlike him We have just received a call for a road traffic collision on the M5 highway uh, in the Autry area Proceeding now, we've received no further updates Making sure his click stays up, that means when he puts it down, talks picking it up Let's go Who the hell is he anyway? He never really talks much never Okay, we just arrived at the crash scene on the M5 What we know is exactly what we predicted, it's a single vehicle collision looks like a loss of control the vehicle is overturned we'll approach and find out exactly what happens what is going to happen in court four years from now somebody's going to come with an angle you didn't think about and after 14 years and thousands of cases i think i've heard all the angles maybe one will come up again one day and the moment that does i change my protocol again. would have thought he'd be the one that set the west in flames and i heard him wreck it with the crystal method name of the game came back dropped mega death took him to church i like bleach man why you had the stupidest voices too you never go to the same place twice, you never deal with the same people repetitively over and over. When I was about 16, 18, 20, 25 even, if somebody turned around and, to me and said to me, first he said to me, you will become a reservist police officer, and then secondly said you'd work as a specialist in the forensic industry, I would have said, impossible. Not at all, I can't even imagine. If I won the lotto tomorrow and paid for everything in my family by the lotto money every month, I'd still go to work in the morning. If this were a case where I was appointed to do a full investigation, we take the vehicle into custody and do a complete mechanical analysis. My scariest night of my life, I drove a stand in a BMW white one. Was, I remember my entire life flashing before my eyes and we just got out the car park. <laughs> This is equally dope, you won't believe the kind of that comes out in this kid's throat time. He's not your everyday on the block. Oh, you know, so people of... think that we use the lights and sirens to rush to go and get our lunch while it's warm or anything like that. And all the policemen and everybody else in the world thinks you just drive an ambulance. But I can tell you something now. Driving the ambulance is like driving your personal car or anything like that. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the back of the ambulance and on the scene to get you into the ambulance and then get you to hospital. Okay, we're in the process of rushing to another crash scene. Uh, there's been a collision on the N7 above the Bosman's Dump Bridge or below the Bosman's Dump Bridge. Now, at the end of the day, what we've got here is we've got two vehicles in a collision from the evidence we have available. We can see that the uh, white BMW involved was traveling in a generally western direction. He was approaching the intersection. The LDB was traveling in a southerly direction. Uh, the BMW collided with the left rear of the uh, of the LDB. The vehicles rotated counterclockwise and ended up in the final resting positions. In this case, we've got double airbag deployment and side curtain deployment. This obviously indicates the vehicle rotated violently and that there was a frontal collision as we can clearly see. What concerns us is the windshield that's broken just above the driver position. That could be because of the airbag deploying, but if somebody wasn't wearing a seatbelt, you'd find the same evidence. 15% concentrated power of will, 5% pleasure, 50% When you arrive at the scene of a collision, your first order of business is to establish exactly what it was that you found when you first arrived. This is why we have a so-called first arrival image. When you appear in court one day, they're surely going to ask you, when you got to the scene, what did you see? For this reason, you want to take out your camera right where you stopped. Turn around to the direction of your crash scene and take one photograph, clearly illustrating what it was you found when you arrived there. It's actually quite funny. You know what brought me into this industry? A woman. 
So there was this little hairdresser I knew. This has to go into the video. <laughs> now I used to joke, I used to go to for a regular cut and blow and <laughs> she was involved in a crash and I didn't know this till the next day. And trying to be the knight in shining armor, I went and voluntarily examined and investigated her case. I went and photographed the cars, I looked at where it happened, everything, because she couldn't remember what happened exactly. She said she saw lights, she felt a crash. I, I wrote what I decided was my interpretation of what happened and gave it to her. And while I was in Canada, an attorney contacted me and said, can you not testify as an expert? I'm like, crazy, I could never, what do you mean expert? I'm not an expert. And he said, no, no, just send me your CV, I'll worry about the rest of it. Okay, I so I went and looked at how things were being done in Canada. So I looked at the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, I looked at how they do it, and started interacting with people there, getting involved with Mike Kennedy and Harrison 60 and all these things. And eventually when I came back to testify in this matter, the court actually accepted me as an expert. So technically you've got her to thank for this industry, or you've got her to blame for this industry. <laughs> One of the two. And so if you were to ask me what is the biggest cause of collisions, is it alcohol? I'd say no, most definitely not. It's not alcohol that is the greatest cause. This isn't a job for me. This is this is this isn't a job. And that's the problem lately is people apply to do this because they want a job. This isn't a job. You can't do this as a job. You've got to do this as a calling. You've got to want to get up at three o'clock in the morning and go to an accident. It's all about the forensic evidence really at the end of the day. Because with with fire investigations it's always about source. It's about the, the temperatures involved and it's about chemicals. In vehicles, fires don't just start. Normally, there's something that caused heat that went in excess of something else's ability to stay unlit or there's some chemical interaction and something flashed and it started flames that burned things or it's awesome. You've got to take note of where you're driving and what you're driving on your roadside. Right because the tyre, it might be a big tyre, but it's what, the palm of your hand? Yeah, yeah. There's four palms of your hand that's keeping you to the ground. Just normal coffee. No coffee. 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 You stop in a roadblock or that you that was involved in a collision or whatever that you're about to break a glass of test has the same thing. Men have had two beers and girls have had two glasses vain in here. Women always just take two glasses vain, but they can't stand, they can't speak. All of us are hooligans. <laughs> we hang out with guys like Stan, so they have to be. The distractive factor of a cell phone, it's no different between handheld and hands-free.